It's not coincidental that SpaceX's Dragon has become NASA's unique vehicle for crewed missions. For other companies, reaching orbit is challenging, but for SpaceX, commuting to space is like going to work and coming home every day. However, SpaceX and Elon Musk have never been satisfied with what they've achieved, and they want to do better and better. Recently, to boost the frequency of Dragon launches, SpaceX has built an additional launch tower system for this capsule, preparing for a series of upcoming manned space missions. Of course, this is not only for the Dragon crew, but also a sign that something new is about to happen, perhaps involving the Starship. Stay tuned as we dive into this and lots more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. So, after nearly a year of construction, the second launch tower for the crew heading to the ISS is nearing completion. On Monday, construction crews began hoisting the crew access arm into place using a series of cranes and harnesses. This is one of the last major components that need to be in place, in addition to the emergency egress system, a zipline-like escape system that would allow astronauts and support personnel to quickly get away from the tower if needed. This is evidence of the race against time to prepare the launch pad for the first crewed Dragon mission with astronauts as soon as January. Why does SpaceX need to swiftly build a new launch tower for Crew Dragon? Didn't they already have one? First, SpaceX is looking to expand the scale of its Dragon flights. Currently, SpaceX and Russia's agency, Roscosmos, are the only tickets to the ISS, and it's the lone option currently in the U.S. until Boeing CST-100 Starliner spacecraft enters the rotation next year. Not only that, but SpaceX currently has only one launch pad from which it can launch astronauts, as well as cargo missions to the ISS. Launch Complex 39A, or LC-39A, at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. The iconic launch pad 39A is a pillar of space history as it was used for NASA's Apollo 11 launch as well as several other historic launches, including SpaceX's first astronaut, Demo-2. Therefore, SpaceX flights are becoming more frequent and the new launch tower will help alleviate the congestion that may occur. Moreover, we can't overlook Elon's intention to have key Starship launches taking place in Florida as they've now completed the construction of a Mechazilla tower there. The new crew launch tower will be a companion to flights to the ISS, easing NASA's worries about the possibility of crewed missions being hindered by the impact of Starship launches. The inaugural flight marks the debut of the new tower, which is the third private astronaut mission by Axiom Space to the ISS. One of the key reasons why AX-3 might be the mission that would debut the tower capabilities at SLC-40 is a pair of launches scheduled within days of each other that require the currently unique capabilities of LC-39A. No earlier than January 12th, a Falcon 9 rocket will be used to launch the first commercial Lunar Payload Services, or CLPS, mission from Intuitive Machines. The Nova Sea lander flying to the moon's south pole must be fueled at the launch pad using equipment only available at 39A. In an interview with Spaceflight Now last month, IM's Vice President of Lunar Access, Trent Martin, said they'll also conduct a wet dress rehearsal several days before the launch. We want to fuel as late as possible. SpaceX has been very accommodating and they're providing us a service that gives us liquid oxygen, liquid methane, Martin said in October. They'll fill up until the very last minute so that we're as full as possible and we have the highest chance of success at landing on the moon. Those launches are boxed in on either side by other high-priority missions. Starting November 9th, a Falcon 9 is scheduled to launch the 29th SpaceX Commercial Resupply Services mission to the ISS, which will send thousands of pounds of cargo and science experiments up to the crew in orbit. That's expected to be followed by the fifth and final Falcon Heavy of 2023, the USS F-52 National Security Mission. It takes about three weeks to convert the launch pad from a Falcon 9 to a Falcon Heavy configuration. On the other side of AX-3's roughly two-week mission, the SpaceX Crew-8 Quartet is expected to launch no earlier than mid-Feb. Commander and NASA astronaut Matthew Dominic will lead the mission alongside pilot Michael Barrett, mission specialist Jeanette Epps, and mission specialist Alexander Grabenkin. Houston-based Axiom Space was planning to see its third commercial flight to the space station fly from Pad 39A within a few days of the IM-1 launch, and NASA wants it to go on schedule to avoid disrupting a busy space traffic plan in early 2024. The IM-1 mission, which only has one short launch window a month, could face long delays if it gets bumped out of its January window. Having the option to launch AX-3 from SLC-40 would allow SpaceX to meet all their customer needs and accommodate more opportunities in a smaller time frame. 
This, of course, relies upon the crew and cargo access tower being ready in time. In previous press conferences with NASA and SpaceX officials, it was stated that the tower should be completed by the end of this year. However, space engineering is not a straightforward journey, so we can't rule out the possibility that the tower may encounter setbacks and be slightly delayed compared to the schedule. Therefore, AX-3 may also not use SLC-40. However, this is not a significant issue, as there are multiple sources suggesting that AX-3 will be prioritized for launch from LC-39A in January and the IM-1 mission will be postponed to a later date. Even if the new tower doesn't get the clearance for use supporting AX-3 in time for that mission, with increasing requests to launch more to the ISS and commercial space stations after that, it'll certainly be a valuable asset for SpaceX and its customers. This not only demonstrates the close collaboration between NASA and SpaceX in the mission to develop the ISS, but also attests to SpaceX's continuous and expansive launch efforts helping them maintain their leading position in an ever-evolving space industry. In fact, SpaceX will have to contend with fierce competition from other private companies in transporting cargo to the ISS. The European Space Agency, or ESA, has announced their plans for a competition among European companies to develop a ship capable of delivering cargo to the ISS by 2028. This initiative marks a significant step towards Europe's ambition of independent manned missions in space. The ESA's member states gathered at a summit in Seville, Spain, have also committed to providing financial support for the long-delayed Ariane 6 rocket. The delayed launch has left Europe without a means to independently send its missions into space, and the continent faces growing competition from countries like the US, China, and India, as well as private companies like SpaceX. ESA Chief Joseph Oshbacher highlighted the emerging new economy in low-Earth orbit stating that private companies are revolutionizing the space exploration landscape. He proposed a competition that would not only facilitate cargo transport to the ISS, but also enable the ship to return safely to Earth. The victor will receive ESA funding and technical support, but must operate the capsule commercially. The competitive procurement model by the ESA mirrors NASA's approach for contracting private companies for transportation services. This shift in ESA's operational methodology could spur more innovative and cost-effective space technologies. Furthermore, the summit aimed to address Europe's launcher crisis, as Oshbacher termed it, which is currently the most serious challenge in the history of European space endeavors. With Ariane 6's launch postponed for four years, Europe's access to Russia's Soyuz rockets was affected due to geopolitical tensions. Additionally, the Vega C launcher remains grounded following a failed commercial flight. In response, the ESA announced a funding boost for the Ariane 6 program and a potential subsidy for the Vega C rocket. In conclusion, both SpaceX and the ESA are making notable advancements in the commercial space industry. SpaceX is broadening its launch capabilities with the construction of a new crew access tower, while the ESA is adopting a competitive procurement model to hasten space exploration and development. These advancements signify a burgeoning trend of collaboration between government agencies and private companies in propelling space exploration and technology forward. That's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.